Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's question is, why does everyone want to be INFJ? Why does every single person online seem to identify with the INFJ personality type more than any other personality type? What's with the explosion of articles and videos and content on the INFJ personality type? Why does INFJ content attract more followers and subscribers than articles about any other personality type? So what I've come to notice is people have come to identify more and more with the INFJ personality type and more and more people are considering the fact that they might be INFJ. These people then have also come to describe the INFJ in increasingly general terms. So we're not only seeing an explosion in people who identify as INFJ, we're also seeing an explosion in the personality traits associated with INFJs at the expense of an increasingly limited amount of personality traits reserved for other personality types. Beyond that, the personality traits associated with the INFJs have become to be seen in increasingly positive terms, while the personality traits of other personality types have begun to be seen in increasingly negative terms. So we are not only starting to describe general universal human experiences as exclusively INFJ, we are also describing INFJs in increasingly grandiose or mysterious terms. And so the problem is we have made common human experiences like loneliness or feelings of isolation or anxiety or sensitivity exclusively INFJ. Putting others needs before your own, that's INFJ. Possessing a deep and complex character, definitely INFJ. Having had some kind of spiritual experience, that is so INFJ. But is it really? Can we really talk about these universal experiences as exclusively INFJ? Can we really claim that these things are unique to INFJs? So the amount of personality traits associated with INFJs are, have increased more and more and they have become more positive. For example, INFJs are said to have empathy, while other personality types only possess sympathy, and empathy is regarded as the higher form of caring for and understanding other people. INFJs are described as being wise, and other personality types are increasingly associated with being shallow or superficial, and so it goes. We keep inventing new personality traits and exclusive and special versions of each personality trait, and then we assign it to the INFJ, making it seem like the INFJ is the only one to possess like the most special and high form of judgment, analysis, decision making, and all things needed to be good at life. Then these people that are coming to and swarming to the INFJ personality type also go on to post articles online about their experiences. And people who read these are then increasingly likely to identify as INFJs, as there is no other personality type online associated with these personality traits, and because the other personality types are drawn up to be so negative, no other person will ever want to identify with them. So here's the problem with INFJ rarity, and that because every personality type is in relation to the other 15 personality types a minority, every personality type is prone to suffering feelings of being rare, alone, or different, or misunderstood. No matter if you're an ISTJ, an ESTJ, an INFP, you're gonna feel in relation to everyone else that you are different, that people don't get you, that you work differently from others that you have a different consciousness or experience than others. But because almost every video and article online will put the feelings of rarity in the INFJ headline, being rare has become an INFJ personality trait. So while everyone feels this way, almost everyone struggles with this, INFJs are the only ones that are painted to be and to feel in this way. So many person, INFJ personality traits and personality type descriptions will make rarity out to be an exclusively INFJ personality trait, as if feeling rare is a trait in itself. So a lot of these online articles, they build their entire description around being rare, feeling rare, and feeling that you are special or different from others. 
the spiritual community has only taken this even further, calling INFJs indigo children, crystal children, star children, sent on earth by the gods and angels to cause a spiritual awakening. Yes, yeah, some of these descriptions make the INFJ out to be the walking Buddha himself, <laughs> reborn to, I don't know, make us all hit the next spiritual frequency. Others, others I've seen online, they make the INFJ out to be some kind of trauma or psychological disorder, saying to be an INFJ you have to have been raised by narcissists or psychopaths. What I've noticed is a lot of people have made victims of abuse or difficult situations out to be INFJ, despite the fact that almost any personality type can have experienced abuse or a difficult situation. It's almost as if we assume these experiences are what made us INFJ to begin with. Now, I've run tests online to try to identify how many people in the MBTI online communities really identify as INFJs. And I found that based on your results, INFJs are one of the more common types to study the MBTI. But based on the test takers, INFPs, INTPs, and ENFPs dominate the community. Yeah, INFJs are, in reality, or at least they appear to be, a minority. While INFPs, INTPs, and ENFPs are far more common in the MTI universe. Yeah, a lot of my followers and a lot of the people online and a lot of people in the MTI groups are INFPs, INTPs, or ENFPs. And INTJs and ENTPs are not far behind. But based on the massive amount of content online on INFJs, you would assume that INFJs outranked all other personality types 3 to 1. Yeah, there is basically 3 times more content on INFJs online than there is on any other personality type. So why is that? Why do we all focus so much on INFJ and on the introverted intuitive type? I think part of it is the mystery created around this cognitive function. Even in Jung's own work, in descriptions of introverted intuition, he spoke about NI types as a form of mystery, an enigma. And it's not strange to understand why people are so fascinated with INFJs, if INFJs are immediately drawn up to be more mysterious or more complex than any other personality type. We all want to figure out the mystery, but to me, INFJs are not a mystery more difficult to crack than any other personality type. I'm still struggling so hard to understand what it's like to be an ESTJ, what an ESTP really thinks and what's underneath the surface of an ISFP. It's really just as difficult for me to explain the complexities and contradictions of my ENFP girlfriend as it is to understand my own personality type. I don't find INFJs more difficult to figure out than any other personality type. Everyone has depth. So what are some real exclusive INFJ traits? Really INFJ is an umbrella term. It requires you to be a kind of sensitive visionary, a self-composed idealist, or a kind of caring and giving philosopher. But what are not really exclusively INFJ traits? Having anxiety, being a sensitive, feeling misunderstood often, struggling with loneliness, feeling isolated, not having a lot of friends, feeling that you have magical powers, being able to predict the future, feeling that you have extrasensory perception, having difficulties connecting and opening up to others. Yeah, any other personality type can claim to have had these experiences. Yeah, there's ESTPs that have and claim to have seen ghosts. Yeah, there are uh, eyes of Jays out there that believe in angels. Yeah, it's not just an INFJ thing. So my question to you all is, how would you combat the INFJ ego trip and the overmarketing we see online? What can we do to reverse the trend and increase the interest in other personality types? What can we do to balance out the discussion? I mean, the MBTI and Carl Jung's work was about helping us understand one another better. But if the INFJ ends up becoming the only personality type genuinely understood and investigated and explored, and if INFJs are elevated to some kind of special or higher status compared to other personality types, 
we combat and we defeat that very purpose. So I believe we need to start challenging stereotypical content and views online that seek to glamorify the INFJs. There's lots of videos out there and if you notice that they are starting to make the INFJ out to be something grandiose, or rare or special, you should ask a question about that. Why do you have this title? Why do you describe the INFJ like this? Why do you say this about the INFJ? Is this really only an INFJ personality trait? There is nothing wrong with asking questions as long as you're respectful. And often the questions in themselves beg the answer. It's so clear that this is a problem that anybody should be able to recognize this as long as we can be brave and we can put it out there. I would also encourage you to note this when an author or writer is going on a self-deprecating or ego trip. You know, like authors that beat down on INFJs and uh, go down to the dark and heavy and uh, uh, problematic sides of the INFJ. Overzealously making INFJs appear to be the biggest bad in the world, making the INFJ seem like the most difficult personality type to be, selling the INFJ as some kind of sad state of existence giving the idea that it's so much easier to be any other personality type. These articles, I believe, are just as bad as overhyping the INFJ or giving it magical powers or making it appear divine. I would also criticize people that make every single cool celebrity out there to be an INFJ. I mean, what's up with that? I've seen Oprah Winfrey described as an INFJ. I've seen almost every single person eventually described as an INFJ. Just because you relate to them does not mean they are INFJ. You can relate to and find something to relate to in almost any kind of personality type. And just because they show stubbornness or uh, loyalty or friendliness or compassion or empathy does not mean they are INFJ. Not every single main protagonist in every TV show, not every single influential historical figure has to be an INFJ. Beyond that, I would entertain for a moment that you're mistyped. Entertain for a moment that you're not really an INFJ. Which other personality type would you be? Try to step into the shoes of another personality type just for a day, test it out, see how it feels and go deep enough into this experience so that you really feel what it's like. Not just the surface stuff or the stereotypes. Dismiss that reaction to go, oh, I'm too smart to be an ISFJ or I'm too complex to be an ENFJ or I'm too special to be an INFP. Truly see the positive qualities and strengths of the different personality types and learn to recognize the blind spots and weaknesses that you can be prone to as an INFJ. Yeah, I still find that even with MTI, a lot of people only want to eat the tasty parts of the pie, you know. We only want to accept the positive qualities of our own personality type, while rejecting and refusing to confront and accept the weaknesses and limitations that we might have because of our personality type. Now recognize that other personality types also get the same way. Yeah, I've seen INTJs, INTPs, ENTPs and many other personality types build grandiose stereotypes and myths around themselves. I'm good enough now to note this when somebody comes from a position of type superiority. You know, they will go like, no, you can't be an INTP, I'm an INTP and you're way too dumb. No, you can't be an INFJ, you're too simple minded. I would be a lot more eager to consider your point of view if you said no, you can't be an INTP because you seem to be a lot more honest and individualistic. Maybe you're an INFP. But that would mean we would have to accept that other types, they had strengths and positive sides too. And that's such a difficult thing, you know, even with MTI and even if it's spelled out and if you know it's there, you really just don't want to do it, you know, it's hard to do it and accept that, yeah, okay, in some ways this personality type is positive and necessary. But I promise you, if you can learn to do it, it will reward you in the long run because it will make you better at co cooperating and communicating with others. So I want to say thanks for watching this video. 
And I know a lot of people also question me uh, and if I'm an INFJ. And yeah, you might be questioning too as well. <laughs> well, still I believe in the end everyone must have a right to type themselves. I just wish we would try to do so without bias or without making ourselves out to be something unnecessarily grandiose. There is so much left to discover about the other archetypes and personality traits outside of being an INFJ and I believe the big mystery today is not figuring out the INFJs, it's figuring out sensing types and extroverts. These types have really been thrown under the bus in the last decades and we don't know nearly enough about how they really think or feel or approach the world. They are the big enigmas today and perhaps it's time we start to write myths and overly grandiose articles about them. Perhaps it's time we make ENFJs out to be the big angels. Perhaps it's time to make ESFJs out to be the big Buddhas. What do you guys think?